Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to this immunity lecture. So first, uh, now after comparing the two different types of response, the innate response and the adaptive response, we are going to focus a bit deeper in the innate response and the different mechanisms uh, that are going to make this response effective. So uh, first of all, let's assume that we are hiking or we are climbing and suddenly we fall. Uh, and this fall results in a cut or a skin, uh, a skin wound. So uh, we are going to have different stuff occurring at the skin wound site. So we have our healthy skin and suddenly we have a wound here. So uh, two things, two different things are going to happen. The first thing is that some of the cells here in the skin of the epithelium, uh, they are going to break. And when they break, they are going to secrete uh, the intracellular components and also cytokines into uh, the location where the wound happened. And the second thing that might happen is that uh, because we fell in, like, against a rock or in the soil, so microorganisms are going to enter our body through this wound. So we, let's say that a bacteria, so these microorganisms can be bacteria, can be viruses, can be fungi, are going to enter our organism. Uh, and our organism wants to get rid of, of, this, uh, of this bacteria, of these microorganisms. So the microorganisms, when they enter in our body, uh, they are also going to secrete another type of uh, mo mo molecules. They are going to secrete endotoxins. For example, in the case of bacteria, the lipopolysaccharides in the material in the bacterial cell membrane uh, is or uh, the bacterial wall is one of the most common uh, endotoxins that are secreted and are going to activate then uh, the immune system. Okay, so uh, these uh, these components of the cells that are broken and also of the endotoxins of the microorganisms that can enter in our body, they are going to be first detected by a, uh, a specific type of cell. So uh, these cells, uh, they are called the mast, uh, the mast uh, cells. And these cells, uh, the main characteristic is that they have uh, many different receptors that they can recognize a lot of different types of stimuli and chemical messengers. Uh, so we have receptors that can recognize uh, the debris uh, from the broken cells. Uh, we have receptors that can recognize uh, the cytokines. We have receptors uh, that can recognize the endotoxins. Uh, so we have many different types of receptors that can uh, they can detect a wide range of different chemical messengers. Okay, so uh, when these mast cells uh, detect the endotoxins or detect uh, the products of the cell breaking, they are going to secrete uh, very uh, specific and important uh, chemical mediators. So they are going to secrete histamine, and they are also going to uh, secrete uh, heparin. And both the heparin and the histamine, they are going to have local effects, but they are also going to recruit uh, immune cells into the site of injury uh, for the clearance of the microorganisms at the site of injury. So uh, these uh, local effects, so first of all, local effects. So these local effects are going to be mainly in the blood vessels. So they are going to increase the diameter of the blood vessel. They are going to increase the flow, increase the permeability, and also increase the presence of different receptors of the endothelial cells. And these changes in the blood vessel, they are also going to originate the four vital signs of inflammation, which are uh, heat, redness, pain, and swelling. But then, as I said before, there are not only uh, these local signs of inflammation, but also uh, these molecules are going to recruit other immune cells at the site of action. And the first uh, cells that are going to be recruited at the site of action are the neutrophils. Okay. So uh, this happened in a very specific way. So let's say that here we have like a blood vessel, right? 
So something like this. And in this blood vessel, in the walls of the blood vessel, we have the endothelial cells. So uh, these components that the muscles are going to uh, are going to secrete, and also different components like the endotoxins and the cytokines that are here in the wound area, they are going to attract uh, these neutrophils. So we are going to have these neutrophils that are attracted through the blood vessel uh, in the blood uh, to uh, the site of action. So the first thing that is going to happen is that uh, these neutrophils they are going to uh, be uh, recruited. So first recruitment. Then these neutrophils, they are going to react with uh, the different receptors here in the endothelial cells. So then they are going uh, to be captured. And once they are captured uh, through the interaction with the receptors, they are going to start a different process, which is the process of rolling. So these uh, neutrophils here, uh, once they are captured, they are going to roll. So rolling. They are going to roll over the uh, wall of the um, uh, of the blood vessel. They are going to roll over the endothelium until uh, they uh, become uh, quiet and they just like become uh, focusing one area. So this is the arrest phase. And the neutrophils are going to be arrested. And when they are arrested, then they start the final process, which is a process of, of uh, diapedesis. And in this process, what is going to happen is that the neutrophils, so let's use a different color so you can see a bit clearly. Uh, so the neutrophils, they are going to kind of elongate and they are going to extravasate. So they are going to cross uh, the endothelium wall. So they are going to uh, stretch and become very uh, thin. And they are going to go through uh, the walls of the endothelium into uh, the area of uh, infection and the wound area. Okay, so we have the neutrophils. So the neutrophils are recruited. Then they are captured. They, they roll in the walls of the endothelium until they arrest and then they produce this process of diapedesis in which they stretch and they go through the walls of endothelium into uh, the site of action. Okay, so what happens then at the site of action? So at the site of action, uh, these uh, macrophages, they are going to do a couple of different things. So the first thing that the macrophages are going to do are going to commit endocytosis. So these macrophages are going to endocyte the bacterial cells or the microorganisms that are in the wound. And then uh, they are uh, going to secrete, uh, they are going to secrete different degradation products uh, after uh, they endocyte, uh, they commit the process of endocytosis of the bacteria. So uh, then they are uh, going to secrete, uh, for example, uh, the bacterial antigens, so the free antigens. They are also going to secrete a lot of um, active, uh, sorry, reactive oxygen species or ROS, which is the oxidative response. Uh, so these reactive oxygen species are going to uh, further um, destroy the tissue and also destroy the bacteria in a very non-specific way. And finally, they are going to uh, make the process of netosis. So the process of netosis or net formation 
uh, it's uh, kind of very interesting, uh, but it's a bit complicated. So what is going to happen is that these neutrophils are going to secrete their chromatin. And in the chromatin, we are going to find also uh, different proteins from the bacteria and also different proteins are going to destroy the bacteria. So it's very important for trapping the bacteria, the site of action, uh, and also for the destruction of the bacteria. And uh, another thing that the macrophages are going to do here, uh, they are also going to secrete a lot of cytokines. So they are going to secrete all the cytokines. So the cytokines, they are going to recruit uh, different immune cells uh, to participate into this process uh, of, um, of innate uh, response. And one of the first cells that they recruit are the, microphage, the macrophages. So these macrophages, they are something like these. So the macrophages, they are also going to commit the process of endocytosis. So they are also going to eat the bacteria and the microorganisms that are here at the wound. So they make this process of endocytosis. But what is going to happen is that the, this process is very important in the macrophages because when the macrophage, they endocytose the bacteria and the different microorganisms here at the wound site, they are going to express, so here we have uh, the macrophage, they are going to express the bacteria and the microorganism antigens in their membrane. Okay? So this is very important because then for the adaptive immune response, our body is going to uh, recognize specifically uh, these antigens in the membrane of the macrophages uh, for the activation of the naive uh, B cells. And um, something that we haven't looked at it because it's also a lot of information. Uh, so in every cell in our, in our body, so let's paint a cell here. Our body can recognize uh, this cell is ours uh, because the major is the compatibility complex. So all the cells in our body, our body is able to recognize as uh, they are our cells because the major is the compatibility complex one. But here in the macrophages, they are going to expose uh, the antigens to the microorganisms that invade our body into the major histocompatibility complex two. And thanks to this major histocompatibility complex two, which is going to expose the bacterial anti, uh, this bacterial and viral uh, antigens uh, in the cell surface, our immune system is able to recognize these cells and then create or produce the immune response. Okay, uh, so I think I'm done with uh, the basics of the, of the innate immune response that I wanted to go through. Uh, let's uh, change gears and focus a bit more into the adaptive immune response. So give me a sec.